I'm in this lovely white 1999 S15. And I genuinely, until now, have never even sat in a Sylvia or SX of any description. But they're a car, like many I will confess, that have always interested me. Unfortunately, the Sylvias have suffered from, well, drift fever. These have become the darling car of the drift scene along with the E36 Compact and as a result numbers of these are constantly going down, prices are going up and finding one that's relatively standard is nearly impossible. Unfortunately what I have today is something that is probably as standard as you're going to get. It is not a stock car but the mods done to it are very minor and mild and if you wanted to return it to stock form you could do so easily. And the question I want to ask today is a really, really simple one. Is there anything more to the Sylvia than being a cheap or formerly cheap drift slag? Well the very simple answer is yes. It doesn't take me long at all to realise, uh, perhaps unfortunately, that I do rather like this car. Now, before we get on to the reasons for that, let's go through the car itself. It's a 1999 car, it's a Japanese import, as nearly all of them are. The S15s, the last of the Silvia line, were only sold in a very few territories, and we certainly didn't get any of them. So if you're looking at buying one in the UK, it will have been imported at some point in time. The mods to the car include this beautiful Nismo steering wheel, a custom homemade shifter here, or shifter knob. It's got a Nismo short shifter kit on it. It's got slightly different wheels front and rear, although not distractingly so. They're works wheels at the front and R33 GTR items at the back. It has some GTST brakes on the rear as well, and the obligatory air filter custom exhaust, although it does still have a sporty cat in it, so plus points to the owner for retaining that. And you've got some very subtle body mods, some mild lowering springs, but other than that, this is pretty standard. Oh yeah, there's an intercooler and a boost controller, but the car is not running crazy power. In fact, we suspect it's maybe 10% over standard. No wild claims being made here without dyno proof or anything. This is not anything like that. It's not massively fast, though I've yet to rev it out. But it is pretty comfortable and, oh, there's a lot to really like about it. At some point soon, I may make a video explaining why I think the 90s could be possibly the greatest decade for cars there ever was. And if you agree with me on that front, I'd love to hear your suggestions for cars that exemplify that. Or if you don't agree, I'd like to hear your reasons why. This, though, gives me so many examples of what I think made cars in that period so good. The steering is actually properly brilliant. It's got a really nice weight to it, and although it doesn't give me the most feedback, I mean, it's no Lotus in that regard, I know precisely what it's doing, and I'm getting texture through the wheel. I've been driving so many cars recently with electrically assisted racks that are maybe very good in their own way, but they just don't feel the same as the old hydraulic setup. This gear shift is so positive and direct, it's an utter joy to use. For a car that is 20 years old, you wouldn't always expect these things. You know, you, you maybe think, oh, well, you know, bits will be a little bit worn, it might be a little bit loose and a little bit woolly, and actually, not the case at all. The last car I drove for any period of time had a very expensive, like, 800 pound CAE shifter in it, and this has much better feel, much better. Now this car is a Spec R. I am not going to make any sort of attempt to pretend that I know exactly what that means. Uh, two reasons for this. I mean, I, I generally try and do the absolute minimum of research on cars before reviews. The simple reason being that I don't want my opinions coloured by other people. So I don't want to read old reviews of cars to give me someone else's opinion of the car. I want to give you simply my own. In this case, I thought, you know what? 
if you want to know about these cars, you want to know the specifics of them, what makes the models different, there's going to be a million different buyers guides out there and a whole bunch of people that spend their entire lives dealing with these kind of cars and I'm just not going to be able to get anywhere near the level of information that they could give you and I'm certainly not going to get everything right. Plus I thought it would be a little bit different to have a video on a Sylvia that just focuses on the actual driving experience. Take away the numbers, take away the, the legendary status, take away all of that kind of stuff and just look at it as a pure driving machine in 2019. You know, you, you can pick one of these up for anywhere from about eight grand upwards, but I had a look at the classifieds this morning and finding something relatively standard is not easy not easy and if you want to find a really good car be prepared to take your time or to spend some serious money i mean this car's owner spent a year finding this and i think it was worth the wait one of the other remarkable things about this particular car is the fact that it's not actually stupidly loud at all the exhaust volume is very well judged and in here it's not intrusive whatsoever there's a few little rattles and tingles you can hear throughout the chassis but nothing particularly untowards one of the things that the spec r does give you in this car is a genuine spec car there are apparently quite a few replicas out there uh, is some extra bracing in the chassis and possibly most importantly a turbo up the front now, officially, these produce something around 250 horsepower, about 200 odd pound foot of torque, in a body that weighs roughly 1250 kilos. And that's a, a pretty low figure, it has to be said. I also think these are actually very good looking cars, incredibly low slung. I mean, I just, it's not really possible to make a car with these kind of proportions anymore. The rules and regulations simply don't allow it. And I do every now and again see an example that's done just right. I wouldn't personally own one that looked quite like this. It's not precisely to my taste, mostly because of the side skirts, but that general S15 shape I love, especially with just a little wing on the back. Nothing silly, nothing big, huge, massive, just, just a, a nice little one. And I do believe there's a few sort of relatively OEM options you can get that'll do that. And even the old S14 and even the S13 actually quite like the look of as well. For a turbo car, the power delivery is extremely linear and progressive. The view out is great as well. You can actually see a lot more of that bonnet than you would think you possibly could. Brakes work very well indeed. The pedal action is excellent. Now you can feel that the turbo is kind of running out of puff at about five and a half, six, because although it will rev to about seven, no particular reward for doing so. It does seem like a car that's at its happiest in the sort of four to five grand region. What it does mean though is that I can hustle the car down this road at a modest speed. I'm not going silly fast at all. And I can work with the car. I can feel it doing its thing underneath me. And it's just an awful lot of fun. I can see very easily why people would suddenly start craving big power and stuff like that and then want to put like a 2j in it or maybe an rb26 if you want to be a bit more you know proper keep the whole nissan theme and, and i could totally go with that i think one of these with an rb in would be hella fun but you have to remember at the time of course nissan with them selling the gtr need to have a reason for you to buy the gtr and when back then the gtr in japan was only officially making 280 horsepower well you needed to maintain some distance because these would have been considerably cheaper truthfully i'm actually having a bit of a hard time finding things to fault in this car it's maybe just not quite as quick as i expected it to be but then when you think about it 250 horsepower 1250 kilos it moves about right it doesn't have a top end rush that i would like but i'm pretty sure if you started playing around with the car you know changing the turbos around doing all that sort of stuff you can find that but then of course you're taking it away from what it currently is and what it currently is is utterly delightful and i didn't think that's an adjective i would ever have used to describe one of these because well 
whenever I see a Sylvia, it's normally going sideways, held together with cable ties, shredding its tires and making an awful lot of racket and smoke. But they are really much, much better than that. It is absolutely tragic. That is the fate that is befalling these cars because honestly, this is one of the nicest driving Japanese cars I've piloted in, in quite some time. I, I really do mean that. In fact, I'd even be so bold as to say, I think actually I prefer the steering in this to that in the NSX. Super controversial, I know, I know. The NSX is the better engine, the better car, the better platform, but it's also now like 10 times the price. So that, that's fine. But this thing is really, really delightful. I don't doubt if you want to use one of these as a daily, you're going to have loads of issues like the fact that there are bits of them which are now very hard to find or very expensive if you can find them. It's probably going to be pretty bad on fuel being a 20 odd year old turbocharged engine and it's of course not filled with creature comforts and luxuries. But you know what, if you want yourself a classic Japanese car to just enjoy driving without having to do crazy things to it. Yeah, get a Sylvia. This has really impressed me. And I actually didn't think that it would. You can even heel and toe and do funny things like that in it. And that's rather nice. Yeah. <laughs> well. I hope you've enjoyed this brief little look from a slightly different angle at a Japanese classic. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment below, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We recently hit, or in real time anyway, we hit the 40,000 subscriber mark two days ago, which I am absolutely stoked about. So the next stop is 50. I'll see you all there. Bye-bye.